Welcome to Rise Up, biblical teaching to strengthen your heart and deepen your faith. As we enter a new year, we reflect on the past and envision the days ahead. Worshiping helps us remember what God has done. Last time, John encouraged us to never forget what the Lord has done. Listen in as we hear about the importance of reaching the next generation and how remembering helps us face the days ahead. Remembering helps us to pass the faith on to the next generation. You know, this is something we are passionate about here at MCA. We want to see the gospel take root in the next generation. We are passionate about seeing the gospel take root in the next generation. We will do whatever it takes to see the gospel take root in the next generation. You know, long after we're gone, that people will continue to hear the good news of Jesus. But this didn't always happen for God's people. In the book of Judges, which is really one of the darkest periods for Israel, something went horribly wrong. The men and women who had seen God's provision and protection firsthand, like like he led them out of bondage and slavery in Egypt. He led them into the promised land filled with hope. Those people passed away and they failed to hand the faith on to the generations who came after them. Judges 2 in verse 10 tells us, And all that generation were gathered to their fathers. That's just another way of saying they died. And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord or the work that he had done for Israel. And the next chapter over, Judges 3 in verse 7, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God, and they served the Baals and the Asheroth. I pray that we wouldn't make those same mistakes, that we would advance the gospel cause by speaking and living a reality of a life with Christ. You know, our vision here at Mennonite Christian Assembly is to become a vibrant community of transformed people committed to sharing the life-giving power of Jesus with the world. When we talk about reaching the next generation, I want to clarify. I'm not just talking about your biological children and grandchildren. I'm talking about the people that will come after us in our community, in our nation, and around the globe. Well, in Joshua, uh, chapters 3 and 4, the Israelites miraculously crossed the Jordan River. They witnessed God's mighty hand stop the waters so they could pass through in safety. And then Joshua has them choose 12 stones from the riverbed, and they build a memorial. Joshua tells them that these stones are not just for those who witnessed the miracle. He says in verse 21, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all peoples on earth might know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Yes, remembering helps us to pass the faith along to those who come after us. And God longs for us to proclaim His goodness so that all the peoples of earth will know. It's like the two men who were talking one day. The other tells uh, the other about an amazing restaurant they just discovered. He's like, you have got to try it. Oh yeah? Says the other man. Like, Well, what's the name of the restaurant? Oh, he pauses. Uh, You can just tell. The wheels are turning. He's trying to remember. Oh, that would be important for you to know the name. Uh, Finally, he says, oh, what's the the name of the flower? The one with with the thorns and it smells pretty? His friend says, a rose? Oh, yes, yes, that's it. Thank you. Hey, Rose, what's the name of that restaurant we went to the other day? (laughs) Uh, In his book, What Do These Stones Mean? Biblical Theology and a Motif in Joshua, the biblical scholar Robert L. Hubbard Jr. says, Whenever Israel saw those stones, whenever the child asked and the adult answered, Israel imagined again the might of Yahweh and rekindled their awe of that great God. 
We've talked about how remembering helps us to worship God for what he's done, and remembering helps us to pass the, pass the faith on to the next generation. Finally, remembering helps us to face what is ahead, the challenges and the obstacles and the days that will come. You know, when we know what God has done, it gives us faith to trust what God will do. If he did it once, he can do it again. If he promised Jacob abundant land and offspring, even though Jacob was this sort of roaming, single, 77-year-old man, well, we can trust that he's going to work things out in our lives as well. If he parted the waters of the Red Sea and the Jordan River, well, he can overcome what obstacles lie in our path. In 1 Samuel, the people of Israel had begun to worship the false gods of their pagan neighbors. They had lost sight of their identity as the beloved people of the one true God. They, they were also under attack from their dreaded enemies, the Philistines. And after one crippling defeat at the hands of the Philistines, the Israelites sort of begin to come to their senses. So this is starting in chapter 7 and verse 2, we read, Then all the Israelites turned back to the Lord. So Samuel spoke to the Israelites. He said, Do you really want to return to the Lord with all your heart? If you do, get rid of your false gods. Get rid of your statues of female gods that are named Ashtoreth. Commit yourselves to the Lord. Serve him only. Then he will save you from the power of the Philistines. You know, it's easy to beat up on the Israelites and ridicule them for forgetting. It was like God had repeatedly protected them and provided for them. Why would they even think about pursuing other gods or idols? But before we throw them under the bus, don't we do the same thing? Don't we fail to remember who God is and, and what he's done for us? Yeah, we fail to honor God for what he's done. We, we fail to tell the stories of God and how he's blessed us and helped us and loved us and and given us hope and a purpose and a future. And just like the Israelites, then we start chasing after other things, thinking that somehow that will give us fulfillment, that somehow something or someone other than God will get me through. And maybe it's self-reliance, that I can do it and I can face it. Well, if that's where you are today, let me just encourage you. That is an endless and meaningless search that, that only Christ can satisfy you. The life with Jesus is, well, in his own words, it's like taking a drink of water so refreshing that you never need to take another sip again. So if you found yourself worshiping at the altar of relationships or success or recognition or security or pleasure or sports or popularity, let me urge you, turn from it. And God will save you and help you and give you strength to go on. We need to remember who it is we worship, who it is we follow. Well, after Samuel and the Israelites had this time of remembering and confessing, the Philistines attacked again. But this time, it was a very different outcome. This time, the Israelites had the victory. And Samuel set up a memorial stone so that they would never forget. This is in 1 Samuel 7 and verse 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shane. He named it Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped us. Ebenezer means stone of help or stone of the helper. And it reminded them of what God had done as it inspired them for the days ahead. Why? Because they recalibrated their hearts to the Lord. So let me challenge you this morning to do the same. You, know, you can even take a stone and, and write on it something that uh, the Lord is reminding you of, something that God has done, something that God has said through his word. Maybe you need to be reminded of who Christ is. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They'll come in and go out and find pasture. 
He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Maybe you need to be reminded of who you are in Christ, that you are a child of God, that you are a friend of Jesus, that you are no longer a slave to sin, that you are accepted by Christ, that you are a new creation in Christ, that you are chosen, holy, and blameless before God. And he tells you that you are loved. Or maybe it's a truth from God's Word, like 1 Thessalonians 5, 6 that says, Pray continually. Keep praying. Don't stop praying. Pray in all circumstances. Pray continually. Or from Joshua 1, 9, Be strong and courageous, and the Lord is with you. Or from Lamentations 3, 23, Great is your faithfulness. Or from Psalm 62, 6, He is my rock and my salvation. Or Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, says the Lord. Or Mark 10, verse 27, All things are possible with God. Or the words of Jacob from Genesis 28, 21, The Lord shall be my God. The words of Joshua from Joshua 4, 24, The hand of the Lord is mighty. Or the words of Samuel from 1 Samuel 7, 12. Thus far, the Lord has helped us. So which one do you need to remember today? That Christ is the way? That you're a child of God? That with, all, with Him all things are possible? You know, Maybe there's a word or a phrase and, and you could take a stone and, and set it up as a memorial to serve as a reminder, as a way to recalibrate your heart and mind. Let it be sort of a memorial of what God has spoken to you today to remind you of who God is and of what He has done. So let's not forget. May we worship God remembering what He's done and passing on the faith to the next generation and recalibrating our hearts to face those days that lie ahead because thus far the Lord has helped us. You have been listening to Rise Up biblical teaching to strengthen your heart and deepen your faith. To find more resources, go to johnreisner.net.